Good afternoon, students. This afternoon, we'll be looking at cost accounting. This is a 203, it's a three unit course. And by name, I'm Dr. O.J. Akiyomi. For this class, we'll be taking labor costing. We'll be taking the topic labor costing. Now, to start with, um, we know among the component of a manufacturing company, the component of the cost, looking at a typical manufacturing accounting, you have um, um, the manufacturing cost, direct labor, direct material, and then other direct expenses. So, in this lecture, we're looking at labor, labor cost. So, labor cost is a major element, second after material in the cost component of every manufacturing concern. A proper control for labor cost is one of the most important problems of the business enterprise. Of course, this is based on the fact that the human element in labor makes it very challenging to really control or like material. If you put a material here today, you come back tomorrow, you are sure that the material is still there. But for labor, because of the human element, it makes it very challenging to control. Um, we labor, once lost, cannot be recouped and is bound to increase the cost of production. So very, very important that uh, proper control of labor is carried out in the uh, business concern. Generally speak, speaking, we can categorize labor into two, two major classifications of labor. We have direct labor and then we have uh, indirect labor. Of course, you know that the classification is based on the uh, traceability the ability to trace a particular labor to the person or department or unit that has secured the, um, the cost. So if it is traceable directly to a unit, a segment, a department of an organization, such labor cost would be referred to as a direct labor. And then the other one that cannot be traced to a direct unit or department is referred to as a indirect labor. Going further on direct labor, we see that direct labor is that labor which is directly engaged in the production of goods or services and which can be conveniently allocated to the job, process, or commodity unit. For example, labor engaged in making the block in a block factory is indirect labor. A laborer could be paid based on the number of blocks he has made in a block factory, in a block manufacturing factory. So the charges in such a factory is in direct uh, labor, it's a direct labor cost. Meaning that the payment is going to be based on number of uh, blocks that have been uh, prepared or made by the worker. Then, on the other hand, we have indirect labor. This refers to employees' hours that are spent on working on tasks that cannot be traced back to specific production unit or product. It is that labor which is not directly engaged in the production of goods or services, but which indirectly helps the direct labor, which helps the direct labor engage in production. And a typical example, we have clerks. Clerks. If you have um, a, the example we use under the direct labor, a block factory, the clerk who keep the record of all the workers, all the people who are involved in the molding of the blocks, it's a typical example of a indirect uh, uh, labor because at the end of the day, you cannot trace directly his effort to a specific unit of 
the, uh, the production. So we have clear, we have supervisors, we have accountants, we have security guards. These employees, their services cannot be traced directly to specific production unit of the organization. So we categorize them as a indirect labor. Labor cost. Labor cost represents the various items of expenditure incurred on employees by employer. And this could be, um, could be categorized into the following. We have monetary benefit. Monetary benefit. This goes to the employees. Under the monetary benefit, we have basic wages. We have allowances. Then, if you take a typical pay slip, you have employer's contribution to a provident fund. In some organizations, we have profit bonus. We have old age pension, production bonus, retirement, gratuity. Then we have the second classification, fringe benefit or labor related cost. These are not monetized. We have a typical example, subsidized food. In some organization, the cost of food in the canteen has been subsidized by the organization. So instead of paying for a plate of food at maybe 500 naira, the management may have paid maybe 50%. So instead of paying 500 naira, you pay uh, 250 naira, subsidized food. The same thing is applicable to housing. You are renting a two-bedroom flat instead of paying maybe half a million naira per annum. The organization will pay half and then the employee pays the half. We have subsidized education, medical facility, like in this university, medical, medical services are provided free of charge to um, employers, I mean to employees. In other words, it's a benefit that uh, each employee enjoys but they are not in monetary time. We also have the uh, holidays pay and the uh, recreation. Now, control over labor costs. This is very, very crucial. There is need to control cost of labor in every organization if profitability is the goal and if we are to maximize return on shareholders' way. So it is important for us, for management, to control labor costs. From the functional point of view, control of labor costs is affected in the large industrial concern by the coordinator coordinated for the following department. The personnel department is involved in cost control. For instance, you ensure that the right candidate is engaged and in the after he has resumed his duty is also um, given the right uh, uh, rate, payment rate. Then we have the engineering department, we have rates or time and motion study department, we have timekeeping department, we have payroll department, and then we have uh, the cost accounting department. Now, each of these departments um, has a role to play. The personnel department, of course, you know that the personnel department is directly involved in the recruitment of uh, new staff. Not only the recruitment, they are also to give orientation to new staff that are employed in the organization. So that each staff that joins the organization will know its uh, duty. So we have recruitment of worker training and then placing them in the job that they are best for. We look at labor turnover. Labor turnover you know the percentage change in the labor force of an organization over a period of time. High percentage denotes that labor is not stable and then there are frequent changes. There are three methods of calculating labor turnover. Now when we talk about labor turnover, we are generally looking at the rate at which people disengage from the company or the organization and new ones are brought in. 
to disengagement and engagement over a period of time, usually within a 12 month period. This is what we refer to as a labor turnover. So if people come in and then they, they resign at a very high level, we say there is a high labor turnover. If people are recruited and then they are retained for a long period of time in an organization, then we have to say there is a low labor turnover. And there are various ways of calculating labor turnover in every organization. The first one is calculating labor turnover by separation method. Under this, we are looking at number of employees who left during a period over the average number of employees during the period. Then you multiply by 100 to get the percentage change. Another way of calculating labor is using replacement method. Under this method, you are looking at number of employees replaced during a period, divided by average number of employees during the period, multiplied by 100. And then the last one, which is where we are going to stop for today, for the last method of calculating labor turnover is by what we call flux method. Flux method is a combination of the first two that we have looked at. So under this, both the separation and replacement are taken into consideration to calculate labor turnover. So we have number of addition plus separation during a period, all of our average number of employees during the period multiplied by 100. So that is uh, labor, accounting for labor as an introductory part of the subject.